The best available balance of scientific evidence found in some of the most prestigious medical journals in the world proves that our leading killer heart disease, the most likely cause of death for humans that involves atherosclerosis, which is a buildup of plaque inside the artery walls, can undeniably be prevented or even reversed with the simplest of methods, a plant-based diet. According to the editor-in-chief of the American Journal of Cardiology, William C. Roberts, the only critical risk factor for heart disease is cholesterol, which stems from the consumption of meat, dairy, eggs, fish, and processed junk foods. And so, implementing a plant-based diet could essentially eliminate the great scourge of the Western world. It is a food-borne illness. It's virtually impossible to induce heart disease in a carnivorous animal with cholesterol as it's part of their natural diet. With humans, however, it causes our number one killer meal by meal, beginning development in early childhood and may even begin before birth from what our mothers are eating. A plant-based diet, shown to lower cholesterol just as effectively as first-line statin drugs but without the risks, is the only unifying diet found to cure our number one killer and best prevent, treat and reverse many of our top causes of death and it just consists of plants, cancers, diabetes, heart, brain, liver, kidney diseases, infections, high blood pressure, these diseases aren't inevitable consequences of aging, these are mostly lifestyle diseases. We have tremendous control over our health destiny and longevity, and yet many may unwittingly be blind to this fact. The scientific community has been our most reliable source of knowledge for centuries, and now leading institutions, health professionals, and academic publishers all emphasize the need to transition to a diet void of animal products and processed junk. When you eat animal products, you start to form plaques. People who eat a diet that's high in animal protein have a 75% increased risk of premature death from all causes. You're eating in a way that human beings never ate. Every one of you and your friends and relatives should be able to make yourselves heart attack proof by totally changing to whole food, plant-based nutrition. Top 15 reasons Americans die. Mm -hmm. And a plant-based diet can help prevent nearly all of them. Can help treat more than half of them. And in some cases even reverse the progression of disease, including our top three killers. Dying prematurely was associated with meat consumption in the most extensive study on diet and health ever conducted after controlling for other diet and lifestyle factors. A 3.6 year decrease in life expectancy, a 150% increase in odds for heart disease, stroke and diabetes, with a 231% increase in the odds for weight gain, all from eating meat just once or more per week. 800,000 people a year die from consuming processed meat like bacon, ham, sausage, and chicken nuggets, with the official body that determines what causes cancer and what doesn't cause cancer, the IARC, labeling processed meat as a group one carcinogen. We have scientific certainty that processed meat causes cancer as much as we know smoking, asbestos, and radiation causes cancer. The consumption of animal protein in general leads to the release of the cancer-promoting growth hormone known as IGF-1. This simply isn't the case when consuming a plant-based diet which effectively reduces IGF-1 levels. Poultry is most closely tied to cancer, with just a daily serving of 50 grams of chicken increasing pancreatic cancer risk by 72% during the decade-long EPIC study that followed just under half a million people. Meat consumption is positively associated with weight gain, and poultry is potentially the most fattening meat. It is also the most common source of salmonella poisoning and causes considerable cross-contamination, which can lead to E. coli intestinal colonization just through handling. Cancers of the mouth, colon, bladder, prostate, and breast tripled in odds for developing in those that just ate 
half an egg a day when compared to those who didn't eat eggs at all. Other studies have found that consuming two and a half eggs a week brought an 81% increase in the risk of men dying from prostate cancer. Humans have no nutritional requirement for animal milk according to leading Harvard University nutrition experts that also express concern over dairy's involvement in growing hormone-sensitive tumors. Dairy has been linked to an increased total prostate cancer risk, increased blood pressure, acne, diminished male reproductive potential, and premature puberty. It has also been associated with a significantly increased risk of Parkinson's disease, estimated that the risk may increase by 17% for every daily cup of milk consumed. Highly toxic pollutants like dioxin and mercury are exposed to humans almost entirely from eating animal products, especially fish, with its consumption appearing to cause cognitive dysfunction, higher risk of cardiac death, triple the risk of developing colon cancer, and a 250% increase in kidney stone risk. Even inhaling smoke fumes from pan-frying fish is capable of damaging the DNA of human lung cells. It may not be surprising then to hear that the multi-billion pound fish oil industry sells something that shows no protective health benefits. It's the food sending this surge of cholesterol, saturated fat and oxidized meat proteins through the body day after day is a recipe for artery disease, colon cancer, high blood pressure, obesity, strokes and dementia. We are plant eating creatures. We are not homo carnivorous. We are not flesh eating apes. We're meant to run on whole plant foods and when we do, the body gets lean and healthy. Obesity begins to melt away. Arteries open up, high blood pressure begins to normalize, blood sugars stabilize, inflammation subsides, and energy levels increase. Even with a family history of genetic disease, diet can be the deciding factor of whether someone suffers that disease. Diet and lifestyle factors can trump genes, as epigenetics has shown us that genes may sometimes load the gun, but diet pulls the trigger. Whether that disease actually manifests in your body depends upon the molecules you're flowing through your tissues day after day. There are families losing loved ones, people having their chests cut open for bypass surgery, people on pills for most of their lives, their bodies degrading with each meal, while right there, published in the most reputable scientific journals in the world. Clear evidence, randomized controlled trials, proving that most of these diseases need not happen and can melt away on a plant-based diet. Someone can suffer from type 2 diabetes for years, taking a plethora of pills every day, while studies swapping diabetic patients to plant-based diets are bringing patients off all their blood sugar drugs in less than a month, and even without weight loss, bringing them off all their insulin medication in just 16 days of eating plant-based. The United Kingdom's NHS spends about £9 billion on type 2 diabetes every year, which is around 10% of the total budget for something that can be cured with plant Plants. In virtually all studies, vegetable protein is superior to animal protein. Oxford University researchers found that those eating plant-based were less likely to develop all forms of cancer combined. Vegans were also found to be the only diet group averaging an ideal weight, and even at the same weight of those eating animal products, they still enjoyed half the risk of developing diabetes. There is a general consensus that this diet is highly beneficial for its potency in preventing and treating type 2 diabetes, along with simultaneously treating cardiovascular disease and reducing cancer risk. Given the right conditions, the body will heal itself. Centering a diet around the consumption of legumes, vegetables, fruit, whole grains, nuts and seeds has proven to be the single most successful intervention for a weight loss diet to date, achieving the greatest healthy weight loss ever recorded at 6 and 12 months compared to any other such intervention published in the medical literature. The strategy involves improving the quality rather than restricting the quantity. And what better way than eating the most anti-inflammatory, fibrous, satiating, safe, sustainable, nutritious, and healthy foods? Those who have become accustomed to the westernized diet can immediately benefit from consuming healthier and more satiating plant-based alternatives to animal products while they transition to incorporate more and more whole plant foods in the diet. A plant-based diet has been deemed the nutritional equivalent of quitting smoking by Dr. Neil Bernard, president of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. 
the former president and fellow of the American College of Cardiology, says that there are two kinds of cardiologists, vegans and those who haven't read the data. Animal products have been deemed unnecessary for human consumption by the two largest bodies of dietitians in the United Kingdom and the United States that both categorically declare that a vegan diet is appropriate for all stages of life and is healthful, nutritionally adequate, and may provide health benefits in the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. The only diet ever proven to reverse even advanced heart disease without drugs or surgery is the same diet that reversed cellular aging, dropped diabetes and hypertension rates by around 75% when compared to those eating meat, slowed down and even stopped cancer cell growth, improved athletic performance, sexual function, mood state, menstrual pain and duration, and reduced the risk of obesity, strokes, Alzheimer's, cognitive decline, and premature death in general. A plant-based diet allows you to experience greater joy, satisfaction, and pleasure from all the things you do, with most who adopt the diet feeling more satiated and satisfied, claiming a better quality of life. So, in terms of why, the evidence is already overwhelming. However, it doesn't stop there. According to the World Health Organization, climate change is the greatest threat to global health in the 21st century. Clearly and unequivocally, planet Earth is facing a climate emergency that threatens the existence of all who inhabit it. The disruption of the delicate ecological balance that has been shaped over millions of years calls for urgent and ambitious changes to protect and restore Earth's ecosystems and quickly curtail habitat and biodiversity loss or the current sixth mass extinction may prevail. One of the most powerful negative forces affecting the conservation of terrestrial ecosystems and biological diversity is the consumption of animal products. With over 74 billion land animals and over 2 trillion marine animals being slaughtered every year, the scale of the biomass extracted from the planet is staggering. Livestock production accounts for up to 75% of all agricultural land and 30% of the land surface of the earth. To raise and feed livestock, it requires the vast destruction of natural habitats, which explains why it is the leading cause of deforestation, causing up to 80% of the destruction of the Amazon rainforest. It is a leading cause of climate change, soil loss, and water and nutrient pollution, and is the single largest driver of habitat loss. A huge majority of plant and animal species on this planet live in the tropics, many of them still undiscovered by science. The rapid leveling of these biodiverse ecosystems for animal agriculture and the profound pollution from animal waste is pushing many to extinction. Along with the methane, released from the billions of tons of manure, animal flatulence and belching, the destruction of the forests intensifies the greenhouse gas effect as the lungs of the earth dwindle and release their stored carbon in the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide. This increases global temperature, which not only causes more frequent extreme weather events like hurricanes, forest fires and droughts, but results in rising sea levels through melting the ice stores of the world and thermal expansion of the seawater. 
the gradual rise in sea levels is perpetuating severe floods that will soon swallow coastal towns, cities and islands, displacing millions that will seek refuge when their homes are inhabitable. It is disrupting ecosystems, driving wildlife out of their natural habitats and endangering those that are unable to adapt to changing climates. We are losing almost 25 million acres of rainforest per year and using a third of the world's land surface to predominantly satisfy the unnecessary desire for animal products from consumers. We are gambling with the future of our planet for the sake of hamburgers. Nature is declining globally at rates unprecedented in human history. One million animal and plant species are threatened with extinction. Over half of the world's oceans are covered by industrial fishing, and it's predicted that by 2048 there will no longer be any fish left in the oceans. The United Nations UNEP report urges for a substantial worldwide diet change away from animal products, as there is no pathway to achieve climate objectives without the transition. It is evident that a plant-based diet is not only the optimal diet for human health, but also for the planet. In terms of global warming, ocean acidification, water pollution, and the toxicity of the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the soil we grow our food from, consuming animal products is 17 times more destructive than sticking to plant foods. Replacing animal source foods with plant-based sources may reduce greenhouse gas emissions up to 84% and would keep us within the boundary for climate change by causing fewer adverse environmental effects by nearly any measure. Such changes could free up 3.1 billion hectares or 76% of all farmland because plant foods require much less space than livestock and this would free up croplands for growing much needed human plant food instead of livestock feed. If the US alone just ate beans instead of beef, it could spare an area of land 1.5 times greater than the size of the entire state of California with no loss of protein or calories and deliver up to 75% of the 2020 greenhouse gas reduction target. Per cropland, plants can produce 20-fold and 2-fold more nutritionally similar food than beef and eggs. It is why if the US went fully plant-based, they would add enough food to feed in full 350 million additional people. To put that into perspective, there's not even that many people living in the United States, so they'd be able to feed an entire extra country's worth of people and then some. The food wasted by animal production in the affluent nations would be sufficient if properly distributed to end both hunger and malnutrition throughout the world. Along with the damaging effects of the climate crisis, it is yet another example of how the poorest populations often receive the worst consequences from the actions of those that are wealthier. Instead of filtering tons of precious plant foods through animals and then consuming their flesh and bodily fluids, by going straight to the source of all the nutrition we've ever received and consuming the most nutrient-dense foods in the world, it's estimated that shifting to a plant-based diet could save the lives of 11.6 million people every year and save $30 trillion from the health benefits alone. It is perhaps the single biggest way to reduce environmental impact. The same human activities that drive climate change and biodiversity loss also drive pandemic risk through their impacts on our environment. The threat of pandemics has become increasingly apparent and yet the cause still remains absent from the conversation. Nearly three quarters of all emerging and re-emerging human diseases arise from the animal kingdom. Most modern human infectious diseases were unknown before domestication of animals led to a mass spillover of animal disease into human populations. This is why livestock production and animal product consumption are both considered high pandemic risk activities. Tuberculosis from domesticated goats, measles and smallpox from cattle, whooping cough from pigs, typhoid from chickens, and influenza from ducks, the common cold from horses, HIV from butchering primates in Africa, and SARS, MERS, and COVID-19 originating from bats. 
pathogens are jumping from non-human animals to people faster than scientists can develop vaccines, and the primary risks for future spillover of these diseases are deforestation, which is chiefly caused by animal agriculture, and large-scale industrial farming of animals, specifically pigs and chickens, at high density. The United Nations agrees that it is the exploitation of animals and the misplaced demand for their flesh and bodily secretions that drives disease. Modern farming practices involve confining tens of thousands of animals into the abysmal conditions of densely packed and overcrowded barns that cripple their immune systems and are a breeding ground for disease. With an abundance of hosts and such prime conditions for disease, a virus can rapidly spread and mutate to induce high fatality rates. Not if, but when this virus becomes zoonotic and jumps from a non-human animal to a human, the results may lead to catastrophic global health implications. The current method of pumping animals full of millions of pounds of precious antibiotics a year to promote an unnatural rate of growth and to attempt to prevent disease is condemned by nearly every major medical and public health institution as it is leading us to a catastrophic post-antibiotic era where we may face a future where our miracle drugs no longer work and in which common infections and minor injuries could once again kill. Bird flu is considered one of the gravest threats facing humanity at any given time, especially the H7N9 influenza virus, which has the greatest potential to cause the next pandemic, as well as potentially posing the greatest risk to severely impact public health if it were to achieve sustained human-to-human -human transmission. The last time a bird flu virus adapted to human beings, it triggered one of the deadliest plagues in human history, the influenza pandemic of 1918, where 50 million people died. The link between what is healthy for humans and what is healthy for the planet is undeniable. World-leading researchers in nutrition, health and sustainability formed the Eat Lancet Commission that stresses that a global transformation of the food system is urgently needed and plant-based diets should be the foundation of such a system. The least healthy foods also cause the worst environmental impacts and so a substantial reduction of impacts would only be possible with a substantial worldwide diet change away from animal products. The consumption of animal products is one of the greatest issues facing humanity as it is threatening the planet on on a catastrophic scale. The choices that we make have a far greater impact than maybe we want to believe. When someone chooses to consume animal products, they are not only harming the animals and themselves, they also threaten the well-being of future generations of this planet. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. So, why do humans consume animal products? We are taught to do so by parents, teachers, and the general culture long before we develop the intellectual and emotional independence necessary to question and verify what we are doing. By the time our intellect matures, we are so heavily invested in seeing non-human animals as mere objects for us to use to satisfy our own desires that we are far more likely to use our intellect to rationalize it than to doubt it. Animal cruelty is woven through the very structure of society to such an extent that it is normalized and people don't even realize they have a choice or even notice it happening all around them. Non-human animals are very different to humans, but whatever the differences are, whether in intellect, appearance, or ability, they are completely irrelevant in determining whether someone deserves life or freedom, as the traits that make a human's life morally valuable are also found within non-human animals as well. Every particle of factual evidence supports that non-human animals unequivocally also possess the neurological substrates that generate consciousness. They are fully capable of feeling pain and psychological trauma from being denied their innate desires. They are sentient, 
and possess deep sensory and emotional structures, along with strong urges to socialize, play, and explore their surroundings. Regardless of species, animals are conscious and are not objects. Such facts are not surprising considering that humans are animals. It is in our shared capacity to suffer that we are all equals, and it is this vital characteristic that means there can be no moral justification for refusing to take their suffering into consideration. This is not an argument that is merely based on an appeal to emotion. Neither is it required that there be a feeling of love for other animals. This is an appeal to basic moral principles which we all accept. And the application of these principles is demanded by reason, not emotion. Reason demands that our moral principle of equal consideration of interests is not arbitrarily restricted to members of our own species and that animals, regardless of their species, should be treated as the sentient beings that they are who deserve the basic right to live their life and not be oppressed, exploited and slaughtered. Through profound social conditioning, most of society has been habituated into a conditioned ethical blindness that places non-human animals outside their sphere of moral consideration simply on the grounds that they are not members of the human species. This ideology operates from precisely the same mentality of oppressive systems like racism, sexism, classism and so on. All these oppressive systems have the same basic structure and all these systems reflect precisely the same mentality of believing in a hierarchy of moral worth. This is not to undermine the importance of other movements, but rather to show that the same kind of oppression is happening here and should be recognized. Speciesism breeds the mentality of domination and subjugation, of privilege and oppression, turning someone into something and reducing life to a unit of production. It is the might makes right mentality that makes people feel entitled to wield complete control over the lives and deaths of those with less power just because they can and to feel justified in their actions because they are only animals. Jewish writer Isaac Bashevis has written in their behavior towards creatures, all men are Nazis. Consuming animal products requires the sacrifice of the most important interests of members of other species in order to promote the most trivial interests of our own species. It's a mismanagement of the moral compass to try and justify that taste, pleasure or profit has a higher moral value than life. Nonetheless, we live in a society which deems that non-human animals are worth more financially dead than alive. It is a moral necessity to consider our attitudes from the point of view of the victims who suffer by them. To quote Professor Yuval Noah Harari, when evaluating global happiness, it is wrong to count the happiness only of the upper classes, of Europeans, or of men. Perhaps it is also wrong to consider only the happiness of humans. Non-human animals are born into a world where someone has already planned the day of their execution just because humans like the way they taste. They are systemically bred into submission. Their natural instincts and social ties severed, their aggression and sexuality contained, and their freedom of movement abolished. Their entire existence is reduced to just serving as a needless product and a momentary pleasure of taste to a species of herbivore that will die from consuming what is not theirs to take. Those who require animals to be unnecessarily killed and exploited through their purchases do not deserve to be shielded from any aspect of the production of the animal products they buy. When we suffer, we suffer as equals. And in their capacity to suffer, a dog is a pig, is a bear, is a boy. Ooh.
consume animal products is to live a life that runs counter to basic moral principles and leads to constant hypocrisy and cognitive dissonance where values and beliefs are repeatedly contradicted. To value justice, fairness and peace and condemn oppression and yet contribute to one of the most ethically obvious moral atrocities of oppression currently in operation and attempt to justify it. We don't even justify the torture of our enemies. How can we possibly justify the torture of innocent creatures? To not discriminate against anyone and yet deny life to another being because of their species and view different species of animals as having a different worth of life by labeling one animal as a pet and the other as food. Eat the cow, eat the chicken, eat the pig, disregard this animal, love the dog, love the horse, be sad for the rhino, love the elephant, but slaughter the fish. It doesn't take a lot to draw the line from how we treat non-human animals to how we treat humans. To value life and care for the environment and yet contribute to one of the most destructive industries in the world that profits from the unnecessary mass suffering of trillions of animals to care about health and yet ingest flesh and bodily fluids which causes our leading killer and nurtures infectious diseases. To be willing to stop using plastic straws to save the fish, but not willing to stop eating fish to save the fish. To believe that one is morally sound and righteous and yet consistently contradict even the most basic moral principles of humanity. It is a discrepancy so profound and obvious that it is difficult to comprehend how rational and compassionate people can engage in irrational and uncompassionate behaviors. Humans pay the price of acting in a way that is morally indefensible by adopting psychological defense mechanisms that distort thoughts and numb feelings so that they act against their values without fully realizing what they are doing. Our minds are always reaching for the rationalization of our actions and these cognitive distortions essentially condition people not to think and feel so that they unknowingly make exceptions to what they would normally consider unethical. To defend the story they have been conditioned to believe in for most of their lives, people react in a mindless and reflexive fashion and are prepared to live in denial, accept fallacious forms of reasoning and desperately try to convince themselves that the act is normal, natural and necessary. They then lock themselves inside an echo chamber of like-minded friends and self-confirming news feeds where stories are reinforced continuously and seldom challenged. Fortunately, simply becoming aware of this invisible ideology that disconnects us from our rationality, our feelings and our values allows us to reclaim our rationality and consciously act on what is helpful and logical. Groundless justifications, like believing that slaughter can be humane, are dismissed with logic. The act of taking the life of an animal that did not want to die for an unnecessary reason cannot be described as an act of compassion and benevolence. Humane slaughter is an oxymoron. Appealing to personal choice doesn't morally justify the action either, especially when there's a victim involved. Choosing to assault someone doesn't make the action justified. The same for declaring that humans have always done it, which breeds the question of why would doing it for some time for survival morally justify doing it now? We've also come from a long history of rape, murder, and slavery, but no one would use this to morally excuse them from doing it today. Exploiting and slaughtering animals because it is unnecessary will always be the wrong thing, and therefore there is no right way to do it. Logic and morality are ignored when people adopt psychological defense mechanisms that suppress their awareness of reality. People often compartmentalize by narrowing their attention to things like taste pleasure and money to avoid the repercussions of their actions. This is encouraged by the industry that blindly focuses on profits as they glorify taste pleasure so that consumers are distracted from questioning what they are doing. It's how we can live in a paradoxical society where most people would find it impossible to kill an animal just for a forgettable meal, but then happily pay another human to do it for them. The industry targets workers from the lowest socioeconomic spectrum of society to carry out a job that only a desperate or disassociated person would do. They enter a line of work where they are financially rewarded for violently extracting life from innocent animals at a rapid pace in a physically dangerous environment of barbaric machinery and disease. 
Violence against animals has been linked to psychological health problems in humans like PTSD, which can lead to increased substance abuse, intimate partner violence, and an increase in crime rates. These are humans that are viewed as expendable by the industry that exploits them and are psychologically broken to the point where they must become numb to death and suffering and must desensitize from killing. For people to consume animal products, not only must someone die, but someone must kill. And that someone will likely emerge depressed and suicidal from years of kill floor exposure. Each animal product people buy is yet another human force to do something we cannot do without developing lasting psychological effects. This industry only exists because people purchase animal products. And so it is in the industry's financial interest to keep the public under a veil of ignorance for as long as possible so that people find no reason to broaden their scope and come to the logical conclusion that consuming animal products is morally unjustifiable, detrimental to health and devastating the environment. To combat the enlightening effects of the overwhelming scientific consensus for plant-based nutrition, the industry uses tobacco-style tactics to manufacture confusion and doubt in the public, like shaping, suppressing, and discrediting science that deviates from the corporate agenda and lobbying to influence legislation to control the flow of information. They make it seem as though there is doubt about what scientists are talking about, just as the tobacco industries have done for the past 60 years. When money comes first, it leads to concealment over disclosure, sales over safety, and money over morality. The industry employs every method to obscure the relationship between cause and effect. Non-human animals are exploited and slaughtered in windowless sheds in remote locations that are virtually impossible to gain access to and are protected by laws that condemn documenting the process. Advertisement campaigns paint pictures of happy animals at happy farms having a happy time and the products of oppression are labeled as free range, high welfare, organic and local which are used to make consumers feel better, not the animals. They are objectified as livestock, a term that ignores their individuality and frames them as unimportant pieces of property. The media purposefully portrays those that work to liberate animals as radical militant hippies and ironically depicts an industry that profits from exploiting trillions of sentient beings as the victim. Each stage of the concealed slaughtering process makes the animals less recognizable until their corpses end up in a convenient plastic package or on a hanger labeled as meat, fur and leather to disconnect people from the reality of who they are consuming. Disconnection enables the plucked and dressed bodies of animals to be sold to millions of families who will gnaw on their bones without pausing for an instant to think they are eating a dead body of a once living creature or ask what was done to that creature in order to enable them to buy and eat their body. Likewise, it has brought business tycoons who have lost touch with reality to macerating living children on their first day of life and viewing mothers as living reproduction machines whose function is to pump out babies for money. It has created an industry that people avoid thinking about. An industry that profits from forcing terrified sentient beings into gas chambers, electrocuting their skulls, hanging them by their legs, slitting their throats, stealing and macerating their children, sexually violating them, extracting their bodily fluids and selectively breeding them to grow quicker and bigger, producing more eggs, more milk than their deformed and failing bodies can handle. Without awareness, a mental tendency to escape discomfort and experience pleasure is often so compelling that it may just dictate many aspects of our lives. Humans give so much importance to their desires that they try to control and shape the entire world in an attempt to satisfy them and are even willing to live in denial to continue. When we don't appreciate our ignorance, we lose touch with reality. We place pleasure on a pedestal, the pleasure of taste, the pleasure of having money, such trivial things should never come above our morality, and yet people let it when they consume animal products. And ironically, they ignore that such sensations are easily attainable to a greater extent without exploitation. Pleasure is a sensation, a product of a biochemical process that disappears as fast as it arises. It is an evolutionary mechanism that can never be fully satisfied. Even when experiencing pleasure, the mind is not content because it fears this feeling might soon disappear and craves this feeling should stay and intensify. 
Allowing the product of a fleeting biochemical sensation to dictate our actions is a mindless and automatic state of being which causes us to constantly experience tension, restlessness and dissatisfaction. This never-ending and pointless pursuit of ephemeral feelings is the real root of suffering. People are liberated from suffering not when they experience fleeting pleasure, but when they are aware of the impermanent nature of all their feelings and stop chasing them. By simply witnessing the ceaseless arising and passing of all your feelings, the pursuit stops, as it's clear how pointless it is to crave them. We experience thoughts, feelings and emotions, but we don't control them, we don't own them and we are not them. When the pursuit stops, the mind becomes very relaxed, clear and satisfied as all kinds of feelings go on arising and passing. But once you stop craving particular feelings, you can just accept them for what they are. Harari describes this process in a metaphor. It is like a man standing for decades on the seashore, embracing certain good waves and trying to prevent them from disintegrating while simultaneously pushing back bad waves to prevent them from getting near him. Day in, day out, the man stands on the beach, driving himself crazy with this fruitless exercise. Eventually, he sits down on the sand and just allows the waves to come and go as they please. How peaceful. With awareness, we can understand ourselves, our minds and our desires, rather than just acting out whatever fantasy pops in our heads. The mindless and automatic behavior riddled with defense mechanisms and conditioned responses diminishes with awareness. You become less obsessive about your thoughts, feelings and desires because they are just biochemical vibrations. And instead, you act consciously as the drive for fleeting pleasure ceases from dominating your decisions and you no longer seek comfortable illusions. You live in the present moment and face the world as it presents itself. Liberation from these physical and psychological defense mechanisms that permit oppressive behavior is one of the most empowering experiences. It reveals the horrific reality that buying and consuming animal products perpetuates oppression and is an entirely unnecessary act that means nothing to us but everything to them. People believe they must give something up when practicing veganism, but in fact, it is just the act of no longer taking what was never given to you. The only thing you give up is all the very worst aspects of our inhumanity. Virtually every revolution, every social transformation was made possible because of those who chose awareness and had acted on what they had learned to bring about a global paradigm shift away from the mentality that causes us to create systems of oppression. Every ounce of progress towards a more just world has come because there were people who were willing to change and willing to fight for collective liberation, the liberation of everyone because we all want to be free and if we continue picking and choosing who gets to be free, we're never going to get anywhere. Now that you are aware, there is a choice. Will you choose denial and oppression? a way of life that is morally indefensible and that contradicts your core values? Or will you prove your moral capacity for genuine altruism by ending the ruthless exploitation of the species in our power by no longer purchasing and consuming animal products? Will you recognize your place in this world not as the unrestricted owner of animals, but an animal yourself? Will you see that your taste buds are not worth more than not only the life of an animal, but worth more than your own existence? Worth more than the life of this planet and every single living being on this planet? Will you free yourself from this dominant violent ideology and understand that morality isn't this flexible thing that you can bend when it's convenient for you? Will you choose a way of life that promotes health and longevity, sustainability for future generations, compassion and justice, a way that aligns your actions with your morals, a way that is best for yourself, for those around you and for the planet by practicing veganism and no longer causing unnecessary suffering, exploitation and cruelty? Regardless of what you did before, Right now, you are aware and can make a conscious decision.